Hey, what's up, CISSP wannabes? I am back once again, Colin Weaver from IT Dojo, and these are the CISSP questions of the day. I bring you two questions each time. Here comes question number one. All right, my question for you today is, which of the following are not characteristics of the Challenge Handshake Authentication Protocol? Good old chap. There's a bunch of answer choices. Click pause. I'll still be here when you get back. Then we can talk them all through. Answer choice number one says that challenges are encrypted using a symmetric algorithm, and that could not be farther from the truth. The challenges are hashed with your password. Hashing is one-way encryption, and there's nothing symmetric about that junk. So no, you are not using a symmetric algorithm because symmetric algorithms imply decryption is possible, and when you hash something, you cannot decrypt it. You can only repeat it. So I can hash the stuff on my side and you can hash the stuff on your side. And if we both get the same value, then we know that junk is right. Okay, but I'm not gonna encrypt something and then send it to you and then you decrypt it. That is not the way the chap works. So that's the correct answer here. But let's look at the other choices because it's fun to do. Choice number two says that authentication is negotiated via a three-way handshake. That's correct. Again, all these other choices are correct because we already know which one's the right answer here. But uh, sometimes people see three-way handshake and their brains go, oh, TCP. Uh, but there's, this is a three-way handshake as well. Uh, so there, there's handshakes all over the place. Like in the world of wireless lands, we got the four-way handshake. In TCP IP, we got the three-way handshake. And also here in CHAP, we have a three-way handshake. But it's a totally different three-way handshake. It's just a one, two, three, so they call it a three-way handshake. There's a challenge, there's a response, and then there's an accept or reject. That's the three-way handshake in CHAP. Answer choice number three says that the authenticator will periodically or randomly require re-authentication. Real? Totally true. So you connect, you do the whole chat thing and you know, three-way handshake, prove that you know the password. And then every now and then the authenticator will be like, hey man, why don't you go ahead and uh, re-authenticate again? So you gotta prove who you are again. You're like, I already proved who I am to you. He's like, that's all right, do it again. The reason he does that is if somebody should have somehow intercepted the connection and knocked you out and taken your spot, this is going to minimize the amount of time that that's gonna stay true because if the authenticator is suddenly like, why don't you authenticate again? And you can't, it'll terminate the link. So that's what that control is for and it doesn't happen on a predefined uh, timeline, it is random. And the last answer choice on our list today is CHAP supports mutual authentication by both client and server. And this is definitely a true statement. Um, if you were to uh, debug or watch this little dance go as you connect back and forth, what you'll see is there's actually a challenge and accept and response going this direction. And then they do it usually simultaneously in the other direction as well. So I'm sending you a challenge, you're sending me a challenge. You're figuring out the response, I'm figuring out a response. And then we're both accepting or rejecting based upon that. And um, now uh, just a couple final notes, because CHAP is, it's alive and well, but not as alive and well as it once was. And a lot of that's because we don't use tons of PPP anymore, uh, because dial-up is increasingly rare, you know, and, and you, where you are, it may be like this thing that you know, your kids don't even realize ever existed. But um, uh, the challenge authentication protocol is totally still used. And the most common place that I still encounter it would be in the world of wireless LANs when you're doing things like EAP, TTLS, or protected EAP, um, where you're going in and doing either uh, a straight CHAP, which is kind of the, the worst of them, um, or MSCHAP or MSCHAP v2. Uh, Microsoft has support for MSCHAP v2 and protected EAP. And, uh, even though with the challenge authentication protocol, we are not transmitting the passwords in plain text across the wire, okay? We are creating, we're combining the challenge, which is just a number, the password, which both sides know. We're combining those two values together and putting them through a hashing algorithm, uh, in most cases MD5, and we're producing a hash. That hash is the response, which goes in the second packet when you send it across. and because it's MD5, it's a hash, it can't be reversibly encrypted, So, but the other side knows what the challenge was. And so it takes the password, which you guys have agreed upon, plus the challenge, because he's the one who sent that junk, and uh, puts it through MD5, and then he checks to see if the hash that he produces on his side matches the, the hash that you were able to create on your side. And if you do, then it proves that you both know the password. Sweet, that's the way it works. 
The problem with CHAP uh, is, or any of the CHAP versions, is that they are still based upon usernames and passwords, which means that they're attackable. So just doing straight CHAP across the link is pretty much a party foul in this day and age. Because if somebody captures the challenge and they see the response go by, they're gonna sit down, they're gonna get themselves something cool to drink and get themselves a giant dictionary and they're gonna just start hashing words to go in and see, take the challenge in the word aardvark and pass that junk through MD5 and see what answer they get. And they'll just keep going and going and going and then eventually revert over to brute force and if they've got cool enough computers that can do it fast enough, they will eventually figure out what your password is. So if you're gonna do CHAP or MS CHAP, um, do that stuff through a secure tunnel like you see with protected EAP. In protected EAP, you first establish a TLS tunnel. And then once the TLS tunnel is established, you do CHAP or MS CHAP inside that. Okay, um, well, MS CHAP v2 for Microsoft uh, with, with protected EAP. And then if you're doing EAP, EAP TTLS, you can do it with um, uh, just MS CHAP. My point being, yes, you are still using username password based authentication, but you're not doing it out in the open for people to potentially see it. You're doing it inside of a TLS tunnel. And that's critical, okay? Don't send hashed versions or credentials across a network where people can easily see them because there's you know motivated people who've got crazy cool computers and they will go after your stuff. So uh, don't do that. Okay, let's move on to question number two. My question for you today is, which of the following reasons I'm about to show you is the best reason for you to upgrade your web application servers to TLS version 1.3. So why should you go to 1.3? There's your list. Look it over, think about it, click pause if you need to, then click play and I will walk through. All right, the first answer choice says that in TLS version 1.3, the SNI is encrypted by default. That could not be farther from the truth. Uh, that is definitely not the right answer. Uh, the SNI or server name identification is the ability for the client to specify the name of the website that they are going to in the client hello message. This gives the server the ability to support many different websites. Okay. So shared hosting like you might find in any of the big name hosting providers that are out there, they oftentimes have you know thousands of websites hosted on a single server or a single IP address so when the client comes to them wanting to do TLS, this server name identification value in the client hello specifies the name of the server they want so that the web server knows which certificate to send back. Um, it is possible to encrypt that server name. Um, that, however, is not a feature of TLS. That is a component of something called ESNI, or Enhanced uh, Server Name Identification. Oh, I'm sorry, not Enhanced, but Encrypted Server Name Identification. Um, not currently widely supported, or widely implemented, I should say. It's not currently widely implemented, but um, it is something that's growing in popularity. And uh, I want to talk with you later in some different questions about privacy issues associated with name resolution and connection establishment and what that stuff can mean and give you some questions regarding that. And uh, I'll come back to this whole ESNI thing when I bring one of those questions up. But for right now, it's not the right answer here because uh, they are not encrypted by default in TLS version 1.3. How about answer choice number two? It says that the server certificate is encrypted when it's sent to the client. Yes, that's the right answer. This is actually a pretty cool feature of uh, TLS version 1.3. In old SSL and earlier versions of TLS, when the client would say hello, and the server would respond back with their hello, the server would then follow by sending its certificate. Um, the certificate's obviously valuable in the whole establishment of the TLS connection so that they can do an exchange of uh, symmetric keys. The problem with the certificate being in plain text is that it exposes the name of the server. And so even though you might be doing encrypted DNS um, and you might even be doing uh, uh, ESNI, which was related to the previous answer, if the certificate is not encrypted, then anybody in your pathway, whether it's the coffee shop owner or your provider, they're going to be able to see the name of the server you're going to. Even after the, the you know, or afterwards the connection is encrypted, your data is all private, but from a data mining perspective, they were able to go in and see where you went. And that might be an issue to you. So um, in TLS version 1.3, 
what happens is, is because of the way that the initial hello is sent, they actually negotiate encryption in those first packets. And so when the uh, server certificate is sent back from the web server, it's already encrypted. So there's no longer an exposure of the actual certificate during the connection setup, which is cool. Okay, we got the right answer, but let's go ahead and talk to the, the other ones just to make sure. Uh, number three says that uh, TLS version 1.3 adds support for a whole bunch of legacy algorithms, and it's exactly the opposite of that. Uh, TLS version 1.3 kicks a whole bunch of legacy al algorithms to the curb. Things like MD5 and SHA1 and RC4 and triple DES and um, some, uh, uh, some Diffie-Hellman groups and things like that that are going to reduce the security of your system and potentially either allow you to use a lesser form of encryption or signing or a lesser form of connection uh, setup security or, and make yourself vulnerable to some attacks like Logjam or Freak or some of these other attacks that have come around in recent years. Uh, by kicking all of that stuff to the curb, you reduce the likelihood that, that you can uh, fall prey to those things or be, be, uh, be a victim of, of some weakness in some you know, legacy algorithm. So uh, TLS just said bye-bye to all that stuff to go in and uh, uh, basically give you fewer choices, but they're better choices. So, um, yeah. And then the last answer choice says that in TLS version 1.3, the server is going to use certificate pinning in order to speed up connection setup times. Um, server might do that, but it doesn't have anything to do with TLS version 1.3. Whether you're pinning certificates in OCSP or not, um, doesn't have anything to do with OCSP for that. So, or excuse me, doesn't have anything to do with uh, TLS version 1.3. It has everything to do with OCSP. Uh, so uh, that answer is there just to distract you, look fancy. It has nothing to do with this. So definitely not the right answer either. All right, the deed is done. That is two more questions completed. Hope you like them. See you next time.